Yes. Welcome to this uh, Skipper product presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Sigurd Paulsen, and I'm the managing director of uh, Skipper Electronics. Uh, with me today, I have uh, Paul Connolly. He will be uh, answering questions throughout uh, this uh, meeting. And you're welcome to, uh, to write down your uh, questions uh, in Teams throughout the full presentation. So first thing, I will uh, quickly go through Skipper Electronics. Uh, we are 24 persons in five departments. So we have develop development, we have administration, we have support and service, we have production, and we have sales, marketing, and everything is under one roof in uh, Oslo, Norway. Um, going on to who is Skipper. Skipper was established as a brand within Simrat in, uh, back in 1973. Uh, we uh, uh, imported products from Japan, mainly uh, fishing products, um, echo sounders and sonars, and uh, branded them with Skipper. So uh, the Skipper brand was uh, really the cheap uh, and uh, products from Simrad. But then in 1984, Skipper Electronics became a separate company. Uh, we also then in 1984 did mostly trading of products. So we uh, continued to, uh, to buy products from uh, Japan and branded them with Skipper. But from 1984 onwards, we uh, changed from a trading company into becoming a production company. So today, more than 90% is produced by Skipper here in Oslo, Norway. And uh, we moved from uh, fishing products on to navigational products. And uh, coming into uh, the, the products we have today, we have echo sounders for navigation, both new builds and retrofit. We have speed locks for new builds and retrofit, also for navigation. We have some echo sounders for research. We have echo sounders for fishing. And we have some special made echo sounders and speed locks. And still today, we import products from uh, still from Japan. Uh, we do import some echo sounders and sonars for fishing, and this is from Suzuki in Japan. So we do not brand them as Skipper anymore, so they're branded as Suzuki. And we import VHF direct, direction finders from uh, Payo. So moving into uh, the navigational echo sounders. Uh, today we have uh, the Skipper ESN100 and the Skipper ESN200. Uh, still today, we have the most known echo sounders from Skipper, that is the GDS-101 and the GDS-102. But we have already informed uh, our customers that uh, these two products will be uh, obsolete in the beginning of 2021. Moving into the Skipper ESM100. This is an IMO wheel marked echo sounder. So, this is uh, developed to be the entry level echo sounder for navigation. And this echo sounder is a signal um, frequency echo sounder. So, you can only see one transducer in the display simultaneously. But you can choose between a 50 or a 200 kilohertz. So you can connect two transducers to the echo sounder, but you can only see one transducer in the display. In addition to this, we have introduced a dual frequency transducer, the 50 slash 200 kilohertz. And if you connect the 50 slash 200 kilohertz transducer to the ESN 100, you are actually able to 
change automatically between the frequencies if you want, and that depends on the depth of the water. So if it is uh, shallow water, it uh, changed to 200 kilohertz uh, in the transducer, and if it is 50 kilohertz, no, if it is deeper water, it changed into 50 kilohertz. So you can uh, set it to be automatically changed, or you can uh, manually change it in the menu. So this EcoSandra has a 9-inch touch display. It has the minimum 12-hour memory, according to IMO. It has NMEA 0183 and LAN from display outputs. And it has the alarms you need. And for transducer installations, I will come back to this later on in the presentation. But you can uh, install the transducer in tank, C-valve for single or double bottom mounting. So moving on to the ESN 200. It is also obviously an IMO wheelmark EcoSandra, but the ESN 200, you can split the screen horizontally or vertically and show two different transducers simultaneously. And for the ESN 200, where you can connect 24, 30, 33, 38, 50, 100, 200, 210, and obviously the new dual transducer, the 50, 200 kilohertz transducer. And uh, this EcoSounder, the ESN 200, can also be set to automatically change from 50 to 200 kilohertz, depending on the depth. So this one, uh, the ESN 200, also has the 9-inch touch display. It is quite similar to the display of the ESN 200. But here you have a printer output, which you do not have in the ESN 100. You can do remote diagnostics. So you can, uh, if the vessel allow you, you can actually uh, go into the system and do diagnostic remotely. But this is quite handy, especially in these COVID-19 times. It has a 24 plus hours memory, and this depends on the size of the SD disk or the USB stick you, uh, you enter into the ESN 200. And this one has a LAN output, NMEA, 0183 and auxiliary outputs and it also has uh, all the alarms needed and uh, with regards to transducer installations it's the same uh, uh, possibly mountings the tank the c valve for double or single bottom mounting and then we have the standard repeater for our echo sounders it is a digital repeater. It operates on NMEA signals. You can actually set uh, the alarms directly on the, the repeater, the shallow water alarm or the deep water alarm. And it has the, the possibility also to, um, to set the transducer position if the transducer is uh, for forward or aft in, in the vessel. And it has a flexible mounting, so uh, it comes standard with the uh, bracket, so you can uh, table mount the repeater, or you can take away this bracket and you can uh, flush install it. And it has uh, an input for external dimmer, but uh, you can also dim the repeater directly on the repeater itself. So moving on to the, the overview of the EcoSounders, on the right side we see the ESN100 and uh, the possible connections to the different transducers. So on the left side you see the ESN200 and this is in green color and that's because uh, the 24 and the 38 kilohertz 
transducer, the pre-supply, cannot be used with the ESN100. But the ESN200 can also be connected to all the other transducers that we deliver. It seems like a lot of different transducers, but uh, in basically we deliver 24 kilohertz, we deliver 38 kilohertz, we deliver 24, uh, 24 I said, and the 50 and the 200 kilohertz, in addition to the dual 50 200 kilohertz transducer. Uh, the reason why there are so many options here is that it is different uh, adapters depending on what kind of bottom mounting you are choosing. So starting from the left side, it is the 200 millimeter C valve. This is only available for single bottom. And this one is designed for the low frequency transducers. So it's for the 24 kilohertz the 38 kilohertz transducers. So moving into the, the right, it is the aluminium tank, the combo aluminium tank. And it is important to notice that uh, we have no approval for the aluminium tank. And this is because uh, certification societies are not able to, to make a special approval for the aluminium tank in itself because it is the, the welding onto the hull of the vessel that is uh, the most important uh, parameter in order to get this tight. So it needs to be installed in the hull of the vessel and then approved together with uh, the hull of the vessel. And this one is uh, used for the dual transducer, the 5200 kHz. And it is used for the standard 50 kilohertz transducer and for the 200 kilohertz transducer. And moving to the right, we have the ETN STCILF. This is an ice protected tank for the low frequency transducers. So for the 24 kilohertz and the 38 kilohertz transducers. And we have seen that, uh, that many customers uh, not only use this for uh, ice protection, but also for uh, protection against sand and uh, slightly some grounding uh, of the vessel. And to the right, it is the combo steel tank for low frequency transducers. So for the same transducers, the 24 and the 38 kilohertz transducers. And then it's the ETN ST. This is the standard steel tank for the 50 kilohertz transducer and for the 200 kilohertz transducers. And in addition, you can fit the dual transducer, the 50, 200 kilohertz. And then we have made a special adapter uh, for the airlock tank. And uh, this is for the airlock tank called LSE297 or 313 tank. And uh, here we have only been uh, able to, to make the dual transducer with this special adapter. So here you can actually, if you need to change an airlock, uh, uh, no, an airlock echo sounder, you can use the existing tank. Uh, in the vessel, and you can change it with the ETS 5200 transducer, the dual transducer. And then you also need to install a new echo sounder for the full system to be uh, IMO wheel marked. So you can do this uh, with a diver, or you can do it in a dry dock. So, uh, so you don't need to change the, the airlock tank. And then moving to the right, it is the 100 millimeter C valve for uh, 50 and 200 kilohertz transducers and also for the dual transducer. And then to the right again is uh, the double bottom version of the 100 millimeter C valve for the same transducers, the 50, the 200 and the 50, 200 kilohertz transducer. And then to the further to the right is the ETM STCI. This is the ice 
protected tank for the 50 or for the 200 kilohertz transducers. So here again, uh, you, you do not only need to use it for uh, for ice protection, you can also use it for uh, like land going vessels or uh, dredgers that uh, that uh, quite often uh, run slightly aground. So is it any questions, Paul, so far? No, nothing yet. No, nothing yet. Yeah, you still see the presentation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Moving on to the speed logs. We have uh, quite some different speed logs, uh, starting uh, with uh, EML224. Uh, this is an electromagnetic speed log, and then we have the DL1. This is a single axis Doppler speed log. Then there's a DL2. This is a dual axis uh, Doppler speed log. And then it's the DL21, which is a combination between DL1 and DL2. So it's a Doppler speed log. And then it's a SAT log, the SL1200. And then it's a combined SAT log that combines the SL1200 with the DL1. And then we have the EMS60, which is a uh, combined echo sounder and electromagnetic speed log. And we have the repeaters for the speed load. So I will go into the EML first. So the EML224 compact, this is an IMO wheel marked electromagnetic speed load. So it's a compact display, 144 by 144. So uh, this display, and you can choose if you want a two axis uh, speed load or a single axis speed load. So a single axis speed load is providing you the speed forward and off. The dual or two axis speed load is providing the speed forward and off and port and starboard. So, but the sensor for both systems are the same. So it is only the display that are different between the two different uh, speed loads. So you need the display, you need the electronic unit and you need the sensor and of course a bottom mounting. So you can actually install this one in the tank, a C valve for single and double bottom mounting. The sensor is quite small, so it's a 60 millimeter C valve. So uh, no 60 millimeter sensor. So the, the C valve is only 60 millimeter and uh, this is making the C valve quite cheap. Uh, compared to the 100 millimeter C valve. And in general, for speed logs, we, we always uh, recommend to install a speed log in a C valve. Uh, and this is because a uh, speed log is more sensitive, especially to growing, than, uh, than uh, an echo sounder. So, this is quite important to notice. And, uh, uh, an additional feature using a, a C valve for um, in general uh, is that you don't, do not need to, to install a pipe from the tank top up to one meter above max water line. And uh, this is also making the installation with a C valve more nice and uh, more cost effective. So all our speed logs do also have a water temperature. And for the EML224, you have NMEA, pulse and analog signal outputs. Moving on to the Skipper DL1 Multi. This is also an IMO wheel marked speed log, but this is a Doppler speed log. 
And uh, the major difference between Doppler speed log and electromagnetic speed log is that the Doppler speed log uses the sound into the water in order to define the speed. So the display of the DL1 multi is a compact display, same size as for the EML224 compact. And uh, this Doppler speed log is a uh, one axis speed through water only. Normally for Doppler speed logs, uh, especially for skipper Doppler speed logs, you, you, you normally also receive the speed log run. But as for the EML224, the DL1 can only show you the speed through water in uh, one axis. It has also the temp water temperature, as all our speed logs does have. And the uh, sensor installation is exactly the same as for the EML224. So it is a small 60 millimeter C valve. So you can use a 60 millimeter, uh, a small 60 millimeter sensor. So you can use the 60 millimeter C valve for the installation. Or you can use a tank, but uh, not recommended for speed loads. And we have the C-valve both for single bottom mounting or double bottom mounting. Moving on to the Skipper DL2. This is an IMO Wilmark Doppler speed log, but uh, as changed for, from the DL1, this is a dual axis speed log and also with docking functionality. And uh, connect the, you need to connect the gyro of the vessel, so it uses the ROT in order to calculate the aft uh, transversal speed. So making it uh, dual axis with docking, you have the speed forward and aft. Ah, here it is. Forward and aft. You have the transversal speed in the bow section port and starboard, and then connected to the driver, it will calculate the aft transversal speed. So port and starboard. And this, uh, it will show both speed through water and speed over ground. And by doing this, the DL2 will actually calculate the water current in both speed and in direction. The DL2 also has the water temperature and the sensor installation is with C valve for single or double bottom mounting. You can actually install it in a tank as well, but we uh, do not recommend to install speed logs in the tank due to uh, that uh, it is more sensitive to especially growing. So you need to take it up uh, regularly to clean it. The next speed log is the Skipper DL21. So here we combine the DL2 with a DL1. And this uh, speed log is uh, designed for the new regulations for vessels above 50,000 ton. So in 2014, uh, the regulations required that all vessels above 50,000 ton need two separate speed logs. And this we have done with the DL21 uh, by separating the DL1 and the DL2 into one sensor only. So you only need one hull penetration, but you have two totally separated speed logs. So here you have the speed through water forward and aft from the DL1, but only speed through water, and you have the speed through water and speed over ground from the DL2 part of the sensor. So you, you actually here have speed through water in one axis forward and aft. You have speed through water in two axis, so forward and aft and sideways. And you have speed over ground forward and aft and sideways or transversal. And in addition, with this speed log, you also have the possibility of docking functionality. 
So again, water temperature is available and sensor installation is for C valve, for single and double bottom mounting. The next speed log is the Setlog SL1200. This is an IMO Wheelmark Setlog. It has a 9 inch touch display. So the touch display is uh, quite similar to both uh, our Echo Sounders and the DL2 and the DL21. This is a dual axis speed log, providing you speed over ground only. Because this is a set log, it uh, provides you speed over ground in all uh, waters, meaning that you do not have any uh, limit of um, of how deep the water is. So it uses a GPS antenna to take uh, from the satellites the, the speed of the vessel, and it has the NMEA 0183 and LAN outputs. And it is important to notice that uh, all vessels above 300 tons, they need speed through water available from an IMO Wheelmark speed log. So that is why we have developed the combined speed log, the Satlog SD21. So here we combine a Satlog system, providing you speed over ground in two axes, with the DL1 providing you speed through water in one axis. So here we have the, the same touch display, the 9 inch touch display. And you have a com compact display for the DL1 part. And you have the water temperature available from the DL1 part. And the sensor installation is for C, you know, that this sensor needs to be installed in the bottom of the vessel, in a C valve for single or double bottom mounting. And the GPS antenna needs to be installed up on the roof of the vessel. So here you have NMEA 0183 long pulse and auxiliary outputs. And uh, the SD21 is also then approved for vessels above 50,000 ton, providing you here uh, the speed over ground from the Satlog system and the speed through water from the DL1 system. So here we have two totally separate speed logs. The next speed log is the EMS 60. This is a combined wheelmark electromagnetic speed log and echo sounder combined with one sensor. And the sensor size is the same sensor size as for the DL1 and the EML 224. So here you also only need a 60 millimeter C valve. So you have only one hull pen penetration, providing you an electromagnetic speed log and an echo sounder. So only one hull penetration. You have two, you need two separate touch displays, or you need two displays separately, one for each system, and the two electronic units. And this, uh, the echo sounder will provide you the depth down to 400 meters. And the EML is a dual axis uh, speed log, providing you speed through water only. And it will also provide you the water temperature. So the next uh, repeater is the multi repeater the CD401. This is a digital repeater operating on NMEA signals. It has the alarms integrated and it is the same integrated dimmer as for the IR301. And it has the same flexible mounting, so it comes with brackets, but you can take off the brackets and uh, integrate it. And you can connect an external dimmer. So for this multi-repeater, you can show 
two totally separate systems into one display. So you can show the speed as one uh, part of the repeater and you can sh show the depth in the same repeater. So here you can uh, use only one repeater and show the speed and the depth simultaneously. So it will then uh, have three no four lines. So it needs to to show uh, on the, the second line what is uh, this information coming from. But uh, as this picture is showing you, it uh, is from the same uh, speed, the speed log. So it shows you speed through water, forward 23 knots, and sideways 0 0.1 knot. But the multi-repeater can al also show uh, or repeat from different uh, than uh, different systems and echo sounders and speed logs. It can uh, show the heading the rotation, the wind, the temperature, the drive, and the clock. So it is a really a multi-repeater. So moving on to uh, the setup of uh, our speed logs. From the left side, we see the, the two different uh, compact displays for the electromagnetic speed logs. So it is uh, the compact display for the dual axis EMN system and uh, the compact display for the single axis uh, EMN system. And both of them are using the same JB60 as the electronic unit. And then it is down to uh, if you're using an uh, C valve, you use the EMN 224 SGSD. If you're using the tank, you're using the EML 224 STSD. This is for the tank installation. And uh, then the last one is the EML 224 STASD. This is for the aluminum tank uh, bottom mounting. So the EML 224 SGSD is used for both the single bottom ball valve or for the double bottom ball valve. So moving to the right, we have the single axis compact display using the JB70 as the electronic unit. And then in green color, you see the different sensor depending on the bottom housing. So the DL1 SGSA is used for the single bottom ball valve and the same sensor is used for the double bottom ball valve. The DL1 STSA is used for the combo steel tank, and the DL1 STASA is used for aluminium tank bottom mounting. And it is also important to notice that all sensors we deliver for speed logs are included with 40 meter cable. So moving on to the right, here you see the two displays used for the combined sat log, the SD21. So it is the compact display for the DL1 part, and it is the touch screen for the sat log part. And uh, both are combined in the same electronic unit, the JB70 SD21. So here, both systems are totally separated with separate cards for each system and separate power for each system. So if one system is down, the, the power will still continue on to the second system. So for this system, you go on to the DL1 STSA and the DL1 STSA and the DL1 SGSA, depending on the bottom mounting you have chosen for the DL1 system. And then it is the Satlog GPS antenna you need in addition. So moving to the right again, it is the DL21. It is set up quite similar to the SD21, so one compact display for the DL1 part, 
and one multi-touch screen, 9 inch, for the DL2 part. Both systems are combined in one electronic unit. And the, again, uh, the cards are separate for each system, and the power is also separate. And then it is the combined DL21 sensor that is used for the C valve bottom mounting. So uh, the single bottom 100 millimeter C valve or the double bottom 100 millimeter C valve. And to the right here, it is the DL2, the dual axis Doppler speed log with the JB70D2SA as electronic unit. And here you have a choice between uh, DL2 sensor for C valve or for aluminium tank or for a combo steel tank. So is it any questions regarding this? No, there's been a few questions about um, echo sounders, but I've answered those in the text, so that should be fine. Yeah, okay. Then we are moving on to the retrofit solutions. Oh. So we have made a lot of retrofit solutions uh, with regards to that the vessel already have a speed log installed and need to change out this uh, speed log. And uh, in general, if it is a C valve installed, you can install the new systems without a diver or without going to dry dock. But if it is a tank installed, then you need to use a diver or you need to go to dry dock to do the, the retrofit solution. So from the, the left side, it is again the EML224 compact, the dual axis or the single axis. You need the electronic unit. And then you have a choice because the EML224 is only 60 millimeter, we have been able to make adapters for the old Simrad NL speed log. This was end of life many years ago, but still out there and still being replaced or retrofitted with the EML224. And then it is the EML224SX. This is made for an old skipper C valve we used many, many years ago. The C valve called PCSV60. So if they have this C valve installed still, they can uh, do the retrofit with the EML224. And then we have also made a special adapter for our 100 millimeter C valve. So this is called the EML224 SDB, SD. And we have made an adapter for the Sagem speed log. It is Sagem, this is a French speed log. This is called the EML224 SSSD. And then we have also made an adapter for the Sperry Navinot SRD331. And because the EML224 is the same sensor size as the DL1, we have made exactly the same options with the DL1 system. But you need to change the display, you need to change the electronic unit, and you need to change the sensor but you can keep the existing bottom mounting. So if it is a Navinot SRD331, the Sargem, or a 100 millimeter C valve from Skipper, or the PCSV60, the 60 millimeter old C valve from Skipper, or the Simrad NL speed load tank or valve, then you, can in, you have a choice between installing an EML224 or the DL1 system. So moving on to the right, uh, it is the quite bigger sensor, the 
100 millimeter sensor for the DL21 or the DL2. So here again, if you're choosing a DL21, you need to change the displays. So you need two displays. You need one electronic unit and you need the sensor. And the sensor we have made adapters for are starting from the left, the ETM SLB. This is a 100 millimeter C valve we used for the DN850 540 kilohertz version. And the DN850 540 kilohertz version was obsolete in 2008 and was end of life in 2018. So if they have this old speed log, they can uh, change everything uh, except uh, the C valve. So they keep the C valve on board and they change the sensor and the electronic unit and the displays. And the same is possible with the DL2 system, the dual axis Doppler system. So the DL2 SESA is for the ETM SLB used for the DL850 540 kilohertz system. And saying that, it is also important to notice that uh, the DL850 270 kilohertz system will be obsolete in the end of this year. And uh, we have made both the DL21 sensor and the DL2 sensor exactly the same size as the 270 kilohertz sensor used for the DL850. So here it is quite easy to use the existing 100 millimeter C valve and install it in the SP100 SP or the SP100 SA or even the double bottom mounting. And in addition to this, we have made a special adapter for the Sperry SRD500 and 421. These systems are also, I believe, end of life. I'm for sure they are obsolete, but I think it is end of life for both systems as well. And we have made an adapter for the Atlas Dolog. The Atlas Dolog is uh, installed normally in a tank. So if you're going to retrofit the Atlas Dulo, you need to use a diver or you need to, uh, to uh, go to dry dock to do the retrofit for uh, the Atlas Dulo system. And the Atlas Dulo system is also end of life. Any questions to the retrofit? No, nothing. Mm. Okay. Okay, then we are through with the uh, echo sounders and the speed logs. So I'm just uh, informing you regarding uh, some additional products we, we do have. So starting off with the Anemia expander. The NE108SA. This is uh, one input and eight output NME expander. It is galvanic isolated and it is approved with IEC 6945. And it is made so you can mount it in the DIN rail 35 millimeter. The IR331 is an Anemia dimmer. So this uh, dimmer can actually dim all kinds of uh, equipment as long as uh, it is possible to dim through Anemia. It is a two-channel Anemia dimmer. And in addition, you can connect it with pulse. So you can uh, do it as the IR30 dim. Use the pulse output. And you have a uh, sensor, so you can auto light detection with external or uh, internal or external light sensor. So it's an uh, internal light sensor here. So you can set it to automatically dim depending on the light on the bridge.
The next product is the ETT985. Uh, this is a transducer and echo sound tester. So it can test the transducers with frequencies from 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. So if you have the ETT985 with uh, the software we provide, it is uh, uh, all the skipper transducers are already in the system that you can, uh, with the software, you can program it to uh, test uh, other uh, transducers than uh, on the skipper transducers. So it is also a simulator, so you can connect it to the echo sounder and uh, put it into simulation mode, or you can test the echo sounder, or you can turn it around and test the transducer to see if there is anything wrong with the transducer. So it is quite handy for the service personnel to have this uh, transducer and echo sounder tester. So in addition, it is an NMEA tester, so it can read and output NMEA. And as I said uh, previously, it has uh, programmable tests that you can uh, enter into the Skipper service uh, software. So finally, I'll just go through that uh, Skipper has uh, the following quality standard, the ISO 9001 and 2015 standard. We have the IMO wheelmark Med B. And I have written down a lot of different uh, certification uh, societies here. And this is because uh, of the bottom mountings. Uh, as standard, we deliver all our bottom mountings with DNB GL. But in addition, depending on uh, the classification society the vessel are using or the yard are using, we can provide a different uh, approval depending on the customer needs. So we can uh, provide ABS or Lloyds or BV or Rina approvals for the bottom mountings. And for the full systems, we have available CCS and RMRS for our products. And on skipper.no, we uh, have available for downloads, all different brochures for all different products, all the certificates, and all the operation and installation manuals. And we have service data bulletins. And they show, of course, different news and information. And we have product information. And we have information regarding all our service agents and distributors. And you can uh, enter your service requests on skipper.no and we have available hot and soft procedures. And in addition now, we, uh, after we have started with all these team meetings, we, we also present the videos available to download on skipper.no. So then I am uh, through. Uh, finally, it's just uh, how to reach us by telephone or even fax, even though uh, it is seldom we receive any fax anymore. And uh, by email for sales, it's sales at skipper.no, and for service or support, it is support at skipper.no. So, was it any more questions, Paul? No, nothing more. So, it looks like people are happy. Okay. Then we are through, and I'll uh, thank everybody that could uh, participate to the meeting. And uh, feel free if you would like to ask any uh, questions outside this meeting, uh, just send your email to sales uh, if it's a sales related question, or to support if it is a uh, more technical related question. Okay.